Guys, we have circular rise around Duna. Now let's get down to the planet's surface and let's have some fun. Hey guys, Luca Mundo here. I'm back. Yes, I'm back. Now, as you remember from the previous episodes of Kerbal Space Program 2, we landed, well, no, we actually didn't land. We just orbited Duna. And here's the space station. Super cool. That was a fantastic episode. Uh, now, due to my health issues, I'm not able to do a huge series right now, but we are going to do the weekly challenge of getting a Kerbal to land on Duna. Due to Duna's ridiculously thin atmosphere, we are going to have to make some rover that is easy to land. Alright, so there is going to be the body. That shouldn't be too bad. We'll go ahead and pop on a communications dish on the side. Let's go ahead and pop that open. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's pretty good, I guess. Although, I kind of like this hinged one. I'm not quite sure if this hinged one actually rotates. I don't think it does. But as well, we'll go ahead and get another communication antenna just over here on the side. Boom, there we go. That way, we'll have plenty of available communication. Let's go ahead and check our weight. Our weight distribution's a little forward heavy, but that should be fine. Uh, the weight is a slight bit low, I think, although most of it is right in the center. So that will be pretty good. I wish I could nudge the weight up just a slight bit more. All right, I was able to adjust some things and I think I've got it. We've got a very cool vessel. It's even got some cargo space on the inside. Not exactly sure exactly why we'll need the cargo space, but it is a good spot to go ahead and put things like a couple of batteries and such things like that. So let's go ahead and pop a few batteries on here. I think we want to have a smaller solar panel, but something that can retract. These are retractable. So let's go ahead and pop just a couple of these on there. We'll actually put them right there on the sides. Perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, there it is. There is the excellent rover. Uh, let's go ahead and name that the Duna Rover. Perfect. So we'll go ahead and we'll go and we'll make a new rocket. And we're just got to make a rocket that can get to Duna. Okay, so as you can see, I went ahead and tried my best to create rocket after rocket after rocket without success. And I built it up bigger and bigger and bigger, but it never worked until I got to this particular spot where I realized I just needed to do simpler is better. So check it out. All right, I went with something a little bit simpler. It gives us just enough to get to the Duna's surface. It had 6,000 980 some odd delta v and we needed 7000 <laughs> so uh, i'm gonna say it will we'll go ahead and we'll make it so here we go all right we'll get to the map looks like uh, we do have an apoapsis uh so far that is pretty high uh or nice at 193,000 meters that's good let's go ahead and circularize there we go there's a good circularization that's another 1800 delta v We'll go ahead and speed up and we'll get going to that uh, that maneuver. Unfortunately, we do not have any RCS control on this thing. Uh, that's very unfortunate, but we should be okay. We're going to go ahead and burn a slight bit early. And just like that, we are in a stable orbit around Kerbin. Now what we'll want to do is use our periapsis node and create a maneuver to get out of Kerbin's influence. And for our first trick, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use an assist by the Mun to slingshot us out into interstellar orbit. Uh, that way we'll save on a ton of Delta V. That'll only cost 834 or 37 Delta V. So let's go ahead, let's target that direction and we'll go to that maneuver. Using things like gravity assists can actually help us a lot with slingshotting us out. Uh, and also, we might be able to use it on our approach to Duna to help save more Delta V. Hopefully that is the case. Check it out, that worked exactly how we wanted it to. 
We are slingshotting very close. What is the periapsis there? 60,000 meters around the moon. Awesome. And slingshotting ourselves out, we saved ourselves a good 400 delta V in order to do that. That is excellent. Good, good, good. Uh, matter of fact, let's go to that next maneuver. Or actually, let's just time warp close by the moon. We'll kind of see it pass by as we go. All right, we are on an interstellar orbit. Excellent. Uh, there we go. We want to go ahead to uh, Duna. This is it. Let's go ahead and let's set focus here. Zoom down in. Let's go ahead and set the target as Duna. There we go. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a maneuver node that puts us on the same angle. Uh, we were currently at like almost one degree off, which is actually terrible. All right, guys, there we go. Uh, we have an intercept. Uh, we'll, we'll adjust it a little bit more as we get closer. But for now, we're just going to leave it like that. We are going to go ahead to retrograde and let's go to the map or let's go. Yeah, let's go back to focusing here. There we go. Let's zoom out all the way. Perfect. Let's go ahead and get closer to our encounter with Duna. Um, if I could just go up a little bit, that would be great to try to position it to be up. But unfortunately, we are going to hit the Ike moon if we do that. So, guys, we're going to leave it right there. And you know the coolest thing is, is we have been using the Mammoth 2 engine in all of these fuel tanks. We've still got a burner right here with roughly 2,500 Delta V still. So we'll land on this planet for sure. And I'm super, super uber looking forward to it. And there we are. We are in to the Duna uh, sphere of influence. The periapsis is at roughly 330. 31,000 meters. Yes, there we go. Looks like we're also having a slight Ike encounter. Oh, Ikes. Ha ha ha. All right, let's go ahead. Let's create a maneuver and let us slow down to an orbit that we can actually manage. I'm finding that slowing down is actually keeping us quite stable. Um, we're not having many issues. Oh, and that's right. It's because I have this limited. All right, let's go ahead and detach. And very good. Oh, yes. There we did it. We absolutely did it. Let's go ahead and kill that. Guys, we've done it. We, we, we have gone ahead. We have circularized around Duna. Now let's get down to the planet's surface and let's have some fun. We're going to pull down our throttle burn just so that we slowly decrease. Uh, and, you know, I don't really know. I know that once we get down there, we're at 87,000. Let's go ahead and get down to like 40,000 meters from the ground. <laughs> I love the sponginess of that. <laughs> Shouldn't be doing that at all. Let's go ahead and close in those uh, solar panels. We don't want them busting off on re-entry. Even though there is no um, atmospheric damage, there is atmospheric drag. And I know that the parachutes can sometimes not work, so it's possible they might not work too if they get damaged too much. Here we go. Uh, we are just kind of cruising on down. We're at uh, 25,000 meters above the ground right now. Let's get down to 20. There we go. Let's go ahead and slam on the brakes a little bit more. We're under 200. Oh, that's fantastic. We're going at such a slow pace right now. Uh, we actually had to turn off our burn and just let it kind of fall. We can slow down pretty quick. Waiting for those uh, parachutes to kick on, though. Uh, that would be helpful. I know they kick on at about 4,000 feet, I believe. Let's go ahead and pause. Um, I do want to make sure that these parachutes do actually uh, eject. So let me go ahead uh, deploy settings. Uh, they're supposed to deploy at 4,000. I'm not liking the fact that they are doing that. So let's go ahead and deploy those. De 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 deploy, 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 deploy. All right. Well, um, we're going to have to go ahead and, uh, we're going to have to do our own deploying here. Do parachutes not deploy on this planet? All right. My parachutes are not deploying. So 
we're gonna have to land a good old fashioned throttle straight up. We did it. 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 And let's go ahead and rotate. Oh, we didn't break. Oh, good. Let's go ahead and get uh, the right camera angle, guys. We did it. Oh, fantastic. And three, two, one, deploy. Yes, sorry, bub, guys. Oh, oh, yes. We completely did what we wanted to do. We're going to turn off SAS. We're actually also going to turn off the reaction wheel on this thing. Uh, because that reaction wheel is actually causing us to rotate forward and we don't want that. So there we go. Guys, we landed. Oh, we landed on the surface of Duna. Look at this. Oh my goodness. I can't believe we did it. Let's go ahead. Let's turn on that. Let's go ahead and turn on our communications. And good news is we do have a, a little bit of tank here. Um, which let's go to these let's go to our resource manager uh, Methalox there we go and I just want to turn on this generator and I want to see how how well that Methalox uh, is used up so let's go ahead and turn that on and let's see where would it be pulling from if it is on conversion rate so it says it uses oxidizer and methane oh wow it does it very small minute amounts excellent well we don't want to keep that on. We have the solar power for now. That's perfect. Oh, guys, we landed on Duna. How exciting is that? Let's go ahead and break here. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. There it is. All right, let's go ahead. Let's get all of our little minions out here. All right, guys, there it is. We made it to Duna, and I brought seven Kerbals. Yes, seven Kerbals. Let's go ahead and let us plant that flag. We made it. Awesome. Uh, fantastic. Uh, that was absolutely fantastic, guys. And check it out. Check it out. Oh, very awesome. Very, very awesome. Guys, there it is. We made it to Duna and we parked on the surface with our awesome rover and seven Kerbals who are going to be enjoying this landscape uh, forever because there's no way of getting them off the planet right now. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys for joining me today. That was an absolutely excellent episode. Uh, it did take over two hours, but that was pretty fun. I hope you guys enjoyed the adventure. I did, and I will catch you guys on the next one. See ya!